Hey, Ming Tsai here with Simply Ming. I have one of my favorite people in the world in the house, Sarah Moulton, cookbook author, PBS star, Sarah's Weeknight Meals, a protege of Julia Child. What is she going to cook in today? Chicken. Chicken buffalo style with some orzo. Notice one pan here. One pan, there we go. And now the blue cheese is a coming. Pretty cool. I'm going to be taking that same flavor profile doing chicken, but our famous blue dragon chicken sandwich. My first encounter with Julia Child, I was a nervous wreck. And I'm not a nervous wreck ever, but it's really? Julia Child Julia coming Julia was in. so nice. Uh, I know, but it's Julia Child. And she I, loved I, men. I, <laughs> I bet she loved you. We're cooking hot chicken coming up right now, right here on Simply Me. Hello, Sarah. Hello, Ming. Nice to have you back. So glad to you be look here. Great. You never age. It's well, awesome to see. Nor do you. Well, we try not to. Yeah. So, as you know, I'm going to make a cocktail. Just get us in the mood to cook. I love the chicken, way you start. Buffalo chicken. So this is going to be an Italian ice. If you don't mind, just dumping those. We, of course, we're going to spend all this time making a delicious drink. Chill your glasses, guys. And you, uh, the secret is use club soda because it actually helps chill it faster because so of cool. the bubbles. I right? did not know that. Oh my God, I taught Sarah Bolton something. Oh my something. goodness, no, you always teach me something. You know we met like in 1996. Yeah, I mean, when, when you were discovered on my show. <laughs> it's a true story, yeah, Cooking Live. You were a nothing. <laughs> and look at you now. I still am a nothing. Yeah. This is called an Italian ice. This is based after an, a classic French cocktail called the French 75, which apparently was named after a World War I artillery gun called the French 75. Really? So we're going to take some delicious vodka, three ounces. We're going to add an ounce and a half of freshly squeezed lime juice. You're going to take all your time to make a good cocktail. Make use of fresh juice. stuff. Oh my god, please. Yeah. Don't ever use those plastic no, lines. Those no, 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 no. Or no, no. Bo that bottled stuff. That's uh, awful. Simple syrup. Very uh -huh. simple. It's one to one ratio. Sugar and water. Also one and a half ounce. That's it. That's drink, and then. Wow, that's simple. It's pretty simple. Well, we get to, we do get to you pop get to it do up. The excitement. You yeah. Turn around. Yeah. No, when you turn around. No, you no, no. Know. No, I'm not working. You're working. <laughs> I'm doing everything. I know. Aren't I? I know. I like that. All right. Do you really start? Do you make a cocktail before you start cooking at home? Um, sure. Um, glasses of wine, probably more often than not. But yeah, I'm I do, right there. I do like my tequila. Jacques Pepin comes with a whole bottle. He does. <laughs> Well, that's good to know. But then the last but not least, the kind of the oh. ice part is just a little bit of Prosecco or Cava. I would never use the good stuff, right? Don't buy a $100 bottle of champagne okay. to put on top oh, of a so cocktail. Oh, so this is just the bubbly. That's just the bubbly. But it has oh. a nice little, little fizz to it. That's gorgeous. All right? I love the flavor of champagne in cocktails. I think it cuts through it and adds a nice roundness. It does. Okay. Do we get to drink it? Of course we get to drink it. OK, thank you. Thank Cheers. you. Oh, geez. Chin chin. Lovely. Thank you. Cheers. Yes. Woof. That is nice. Is it nice? Yeah. Woof. Does it will inspire you to cook buffalo chicken? Oh, I think so. I think this would go very nicely with it, actually. Let's talk see. Talk about a pairing. Well, let's go. Talk yeah. about us. We're a pairing. Come yes, on, let's okay. Go. Let's go. Let's go. What's the dish? Buffalo chicken orzo. And Love I'm going to have you start with the chicken. All right, chicken okay, in the fridge. And I'm going to get the orzo going. Um, now, we should tell people who don't know what orzo is what it is. What is orzo? It's rice shaped pasta. Okay. And uh, it cooks very quickly. This, did I mention this is a five ingredient recipe? You did not. So, why? So talk to me about that. Why five ingredients only? Because if you start with fewer ingredients, don't do this at home. Um, yeah, that's I do that all the time. You taste the wall. You have to taste the water. I know, but you, you, could, you, could, you could use a spoon. You could. Yeah. No, but it doesn't but, matter. Nothing's But it's not as flashy as sticking your But finger the point in. is, it should taste like seawater, right? Right, it does. Because orzo has no flavor per se, at least no seasoning. And you can't add it afterwards. The salt does not go in. You have to add it to the water. Awesome. So do you, are you a cover to bring it to boil and uncover, or you like it uncovered? What do you do? I, I, do. I cover so it gets to a boil quickly. Okay, let's do that. You're and impatient, then, but, then but I, I also stir it's it. It's not that I'm impatient. It's I just also that stir I it. don't like wasting energy because this world has no, one No, no, you're absolutely I right. I love orzo. Orzo okay. is like the easy risotto. Yes, right. right. Because risotto takes an extra, you know, je ne sais quoi. you got to watch 20 it. 20 minutes, yeah. All right, so okay. how big would about, you like these pieces? About like this, half inch cube. Half inch, so just go kind of long. Dice is like, yes, like this. and I was just going to point out that if you're doing this at home, it like really helps to get uh, to get it and throw it in the freezer for about a half an hour. 
because it's much easier to chop raw meat if it's a little bit, you know, frozen. So buffalo chicken, is that something like when you were like yay big or eating wings and stuff? No, I never, I hated hot sauce. I hated blue cheese. But anyway, this is a okay. take on this. So buffalo chicken, as everybody right. knows, it's deep fried chicken wings tossed right. in butter and hot sauce. So we've got our butter, we've got our hot sauce, we've yep. got our chicken, but it's right. quick, quicker to cook it this way yep. and much safer than deep frying. Let me get the butter going. Do you know pan. I have the world record? It's not Guinness proved, but I ate 115 chicken wings in an hour. Wow. Yeah, I wouldn't recommend it. There we go. At um, any rate, so a significant amount of butter. So this goes in now. Do you season this at all now, or you season it when you're in there? Let's season it now. Okay. Okay, yeah. I'll pepper for go you. ahead. Yep, and I'll do the salt. Got it. Um, it's important to season as you go. Yeah. Don't wait to the end, or it tastes, it's sort of like a toupee. You know, it doesn't become one with the head. Hey, that was a secret. I can't believe you're divulging that. <laughs> you mean that. that's not real? <laughs> yeah, no, this is, yeah, it's, yeah this is a come over. Yeah, yeah, okay. that's gorgeous, okay. I'll help you here. All right, so All this, right. we, we want to only partially cook the chicken because we're going to park it and it's going to get reheated again with the orzo. Okay. Okay. By the way, and then we finish it with some blue cheese and some hot sauce. But I just, and we're going to talk about celery, yes. which is the sixth ingredient, so we're cheating. Oh, but as we all okay. know, celery well, is an important part. You're terrible, and you get some leeway. I can cheat, I can cheat. And let me stir and pay attention down here. I took a tip from the Italians, you know how they finish the pasta in the sauce? Yep. So that the pasta absorbs the sauce? Yep. That's what we're doing here. So ah, I'm going to get. And you got like butter poaching. I love this. It looks yeah. luscious already. It doesn't? Oh, good. Okay, talk about celery. Well, this is your cell. Celery comes like this, right? But most people, I think, throw away the leaves. What they do you do? do? I, I save them. Save them? They're yummy. Okay. And we're going to use them as our garnish. But you have, I think you have an idea about how you want to garnish this, right? Well, I don't know if this is your dish, but I do think the leaves are great. I think I think celery leaves are a great garnish. So the orange is going to take what six minutes more, probably. Yeah, I mean, less, okay. less. You know, less? we want to undercook right. it, well, we'll undercook it. Then. Yeah, and then um, I know you're going to do some fancy garnish, but um, and I'm cheating with the celery, but it's because celery is the garnish for buffalo chicken you wings. You have to have celery. I think yeah. you need to have celery stick, and I think celery leaves is fantastic. Yeah, and we should say so. It's deep fried wings tossed in butter and hot sauce, right. um, served with the blue cheese dipping sauce and celery. You close there? All yeah. Right, I got your celery garnish there. And, um, okay, so you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to turn this off. Crap. All right. Okay. I and, love, I love celery hearts. And I'm going to add the hot sauce. And it's uh, mm -hmm. as much as you want. And we're using. You could use any any one you want. The classic would be that. What's the one uh, from? They would use oh Frank's. 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 I knew. I knew. I was forgetting. But you could use any one you like. Um, although you want it to be acidic. Because you, you do want vinegar, cause, yep. Because the blue cheese, you know, I think it's a couple of tablespoons. All right, so let's How's see. Our let's doing? see how our orza is doing. Uh, let's see. Don't do this at home. Mm. Like oh, I think we're ready. We're yeah. ready? I'm All right, can I help you, you strain? Mm -hmm. All right, you put that now there. Now we're going to save some of this cooking liquid. All right, so you're putting a ball. I love that. So you put a Pyrex bowl below. Right, So cause, because this is like, as I said, with pasta, you save some of the pasta cooking liquid, which has some of the starch from the pasta, yep. so that then when you add the liquid back to the pan, uh, it, it sort of thickens the whole thing. So the orzo, notice one pan here. One that. pan, there we go, and now the blue cheese is a coming. All right. There we go. Here, and we're using just regular old crumbled blue cheese. You could use gorgonzola. You could use your favorite, whatever your favorite blue cheese is. Um, you this also is awesome. could use chicken broth if you May wanted. I mix it oh, please, you. yeah, please do. Yeah, do your Ming's thing. That <laughs> Ming thing. And it's got to it's got to reduce a bit. Um, right. So we're, what we're doing is we're finishing cooking the chicken, we're finishing cooking the orzo, and we're creaming the whole thing up. Look at this pasta water. I mean, it does. It's cloudy because of the starches, right? Yeah. This isn't, it's so much better to thicken and finish the sauce than just water. Right. Plus it's hot. Well, and it's one of my, well, it's not even a five, you know, it's one of the ingredients. Actually, we don't count water or salt. Sorry, we're cheating. We may add more. See, it looks pretty good already. Do it we, looks like risotto. Shall we taste it? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I'm, my mouth is watering. I think we need more hot sauce. I can tell looking at it. What do you think? I agree. Mm, go for it. Mm. It's so good. Not bad, huh? And you don't need only any... five ingredients, and right? It's, and it's perfectly seasoned because of the blue cheese. Right. Right. You don't. You don't need more salt. No. So if you were going to add chicken broth, you need to go for um, low sodium, because otherwise this would be. I think it's done. Let's do it. Yeah. Let me but, get you big. But oh, you got our garnish ready and everything. I'm so ready for your ceremony. Yeah. See. This see now. Awesome. You see, we just made this in real time. <laughs> Although of course two of us. We did always it. made. Real and you can cut up a chicken in ten just, seconds. Just so. In the middle? Yeah, just in the middle. Okay. Yum, yum. Looks awesome. It and don't you think great. this cocktail is perfect? It's perfect. The acid will cut through the creaminess and the um, sugar will cut through the heat. 
I love it. Yeah. Are uh, you garnish away there, yeah. chef? Well, no, you had. Well, I'm going to do the, the the leaves. You can do the. You had vision of the doohickey of the actual stalks. Well, I just figured since we had. Right. Let's do it. We had. We had to do something right. with these, right? Yum, I mean, yum. Come on. You have. You have your stalks. Yeah. Well, there we go. There we go. Now, if kids don't like blue cheese, you could use cheddar. I love Aren't this Aren't you dish. impressed? I am impressed. You are mocking me. Five minutes. I would never mock you Sarah. Mocking what are you yes, talking you about? Were. No, yes, you were. But here, ta da. Taste awesome. This. You need no, to taste it. I've already tasted it, but we're going to cook my buffalo chicken ah. style recipe. Then oh. we get to sit down table. Can't wait. Can't wait. Okay, yeah. Sarah Moulton. Boom, look at that. I can't wait to try that orzo chicken. It looks so good. It's so simple. Five ingredients plus one. Yes. Six. You're not supposed to mention the celery. It's okay, but it's good. So okay. I'm doing the blue dragon chicken sandwich, which is infamous. I want to show I'm you so and you how we do I'm it. I'm so excited. Key one is brine. Of right? course, of course. So we have chicken sugar and salt. Okay. How much you put in? Equal parts. One, two. Very scientific. One, two. What is, how much do you add? We've all been to the ocean. We've all swallowed seawater, unfortunately, right. right? It's got to taste so salty. This has to taste like sweet seawater. So literally, so that's not quite. No. Nope. Like a big wave hitting you in the yeah, face. Yeah, yeah. And by the way, if you, you don't have to add the sugar, it does make it taste better, but it's not necessary. What is necessary in a brine, of course, is it's salt. It's the salt. And right. the reason we're brining it is because? So brining, so this is good. Try that. Make sure that's salty enough for you. Should, mm -hmm. got to taste like the sweet sea. Yeah. Good? Yeah, good. So the reason you brine, and there's a lot of discussions about this. Lots of chefs, some do, some don't. I'm a big fan for, for pork and chicken, like turkey for Thanksgiving. It's osmosis. What happens is nature wants equilibrium. So if you have a salinated solution, which this is, it originally, when the protein hits, it actually draws the moisture out of the chicken, which makes it dry. But once you have this chicken juice in the, in the brine, what happens is nature wants to establish equilibrium, it draws back the flavored juice, which is now sugar, water, salt, and the chicken juice, and it helps plump it up. So when it cooks, because salt retains water, when it cooks, you get tender and juicy Much chicken. moisture, because chicken, so, moisture, listen to so me, moisture. You want to go 24 hours, right? That's I, what we have I here. just want to point out you're using dark meat chicken, which is a good choice to begin with. Chicken thighs, thighs. thank you. Yes, because um, they're juicier anyway. Right. So after 24 hours, you can see that it gets a little bit more opaque, mm -hmm. and this is ready to go, all right? Okay. Come on. Come and if you me. couldn't do 24 hours, would yeah. six be okay? Absolutely. Okay. Um, actually, if I'm at home and I only have an hour, I do a dry rub then. Yes. And I put even more. Yes. So we're just going to drain these, because I need dry chicken right. to coat. So again, I yeah, apologize I mean, in advance. We have I a mean, lot of on. ingredients. What she is had this, five. a restaurant kitchen? Yeah. Well, this is what it takes to make a great chicken sandwich in a restaurant. A great chef, right? right? So this is the batter, which we have cornstarch and buttermilk, a great hot sauce, a little bit of acid, an egg, and a little bit of baking powder. This is the dry rub, which is, again, cornstarch with rice flour, garlic powder and ginger powder and onion powder, salt and black pepper. Um, and then here's the slaw. So I need you, if you don't mind, using this box grater. Oh. Grate me some carrots, okay. grate me some celery, and then thin slice some scallions. And this is going to be a yogurt sour cream slaw. Okay. All right. So I'm going to go right. ahead and get started okay. on the batter. So again, rice flour, buttermilk, and if you want to keep it dairy free, um, you could you could use soda water. Yeah. This is the hot sauce. You could use beer. You could use beer. Good point. Excellent point. Actually, I love beer batter. I think beer batter has a great, it has a sweetness to it that helps make things caramelize. One egg. Also, the acidity of the beer helps too. Yeah. Uh, baking powder. Okay. Then a good club soda or sparkling water. That's what we have here. That's simple. And I, and I like I like bubbles because bubbles help make the batter even lighter. Crispier, right? lighter. Yeah. Meanwhile, can I just say that I don't, I'm doing this for you, but I never use this tool. I consider this a lethal weapon. You use a plug-in, don't you? I use one of those food processors or the grating disc because have you ever noticed with this, if you're not paying attention, a little bit you of you goes into every dish. Wow. Yeah, you know, it gets, it can get quite um, <laughs> a ugly. Couple, a couple pieces of Sarah Molten, yeah, it won't be bad. Yeah, that's quoi. Right? So okay. again, you want it not super thick, kind mm -hmm. of pancake batter consistency, all right? That's perfect. That's what I'm looking for, right? There's my batter. Now, go ahead and do the 
flour mixture. I'm so sorry, you I'm dip it in the batter. Yep. And then you dip it in the flour, then you fry it. Right. So uh, the batter first. Batter first, yes. Before the flour mixture. Yeah. I usually do it the other way around. Okay. So the corn flour starch. glues the batter on. Exactly. That was cornstarch and rice flour. Mm -hmm. Equal parts. A lot of stuff here. We Good. have garlic powder, uh, onion powder, garlic powder. And again, guys, this is more quantity than you would use in, I don't know, a year at home. Black pepper. Look nope. how much black pepper that is. That's a lot of black pepper. Salt. Ginger powder. Okay. So that here. is a lifetime supply. Yeah. But again, there's nothing in here that will spoil. So if you're going to make it, make it big quantity. I would actually put them into plastic sealable bags if you have extra, and then put it into your freezer. It will last, it could last a year into your freezer. All right. So here we have our flour mixture. Right, so this has salt and everything into it. That's great. Did you invent this? Oh, we did it at Blue Dragon, yeah. So Christine Cantlin is my chef. You have a female chef? I have a fantastic female chef. I'm glad to She's hear from, that. So when I first cooked for Julia at, at, at Blue Dr Ginger, we're talking probably 20 years ago, I was a nervous wreck. And I'm not a nervous wreck ever, but it's really? Julia Child Julia coming was in. so nice. Uh, I know, but it's Julia Child. And He's, she I, loved I, men. I, I, <laughs> I bet she loved you. <laughs> you know what? In the very beginning, I'm just nervous. I'm, just, I'm serving all the best food I can possibly serve. And then sure enough, the waiter says, hey, chef, Julia wants to speak with you. I just served her my foie gras shumai. Oh, my all right, God. So batter and then flour, guys, right? I like want this. some of that. Look at that. So that's how you batter this. So I'm cleaning myself up. I'm getting my hair ready. I'm getting my apron changed. I'm like, is she going to say the best preparation for foie gras, the most creative, the lightest? What is she going to say? And I have an open kitchen, as you know, a blue gender. And she goes, I go, yes, Julia? She goes, chef? I'm like, yes. She goes, you don't have one woman line cook. I'm like, oh, God. Oh, That's my girl. That's my girl. Yep, 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 yep. I go yep. back to the kitchen. And the cook's like, what did she say? Goes, Shut up. Keep cooking. I was so distraught. And she was right. I did have women. Not that I don't like women. I married a woman. I love women. I know, but, but that's in different. In this industry, back then especially, there just weren't enough women line cooks. I know. There's still not enough. I mean, I women are smarter, and they listen better. and They're calmer <laughs> under pressure. They're, they're just Much as, calmer They're under just pressure. a superior race. But you know what? We are a close second. Yeah. So that's good. Yeah. But anyway. Oh, that's so funny. But the, and the, but thank God, at the end of the day, she loved the meal. And she did something that I do now whenever I go to a restaurant. She went to every single person on the line. Dishwasher, cook. Thank you very much. Thank you very she's much. She's amazing. Thank you very much. It was, she was amazing. amazing. It was like, wow, that's why she's Julie Chong. She is. All right, you see what we're doing here, guys? Into the batter and then a great flour coating. All right. Slaw's looking good. I'm not quite as far as far. No, along. you keep going. We're going to start frying. So 360, perfect. And I want it really kind of crispy. So this is like southern fried so much stuff. Yeah, this, this is going to have um, a good spicy tang to it. So we're going to go ahead and get Ming, do you want um, white and green or just white? Um, white and green, please. Okay. Scallions, yes. Put one more here. All right, we'll get one more in here. All right, sir, we're going to take about eight minutes because it's going to take eight minutes for us to get GB&D, Golden Brown Delicious. We come back, we get to make a chicken sandwich. Eight minutes, Sarah. Look at these puppies. Wow, that is just ridiculously right? yummy looking. Go ahead, just give me a little salt on top of here, okay, please, Sarah. Okay. Just like French fries, you always sprinkle while it's hot and right, right out of the oil, oil because right. that's how it sticks. Right. I, I just want to say that frying at home is completely possible as long as you have one of those deep fat fryers. Yep. But you must have one of those deep fat fryers. Perfect. Otherwise, it's dangerous. Oh, look at those. Look at those. All right. Okay. To make our sauce. Okay. So classic buffalo sauce is actually the famous hot sauce in butter. Well, here we have butter. And again, guys, I'm just making... Just a little. This is enough for probably at least eight chicken sandwiches, at least. This, have you ever had before? No, no. It's What's momiji. That? This is a Japanese super spicy chili sauce that has carrot. Yeah, give it a try. It has a little carrot puree. Really spicy. Right? I should say so. Right? That's a kick. Woo! That's what we're well, talking the, about. The butter will. That's, and then that's fun. A little tamari. All right? That's so fun. That, that's going to be a sauce. That's going to come together. Okay. Now for the slaw. Okay. So please, this is sour cream into my yogurt. Okay. Oops. Sorry. It's all right. Again, this is much more than you need, yeah. right? This is like for eight chicken sandwiches. Okay. This is a really rich type, little blue, blue cheese. Like do you, you want did. all of that? Yeah. All of it, please. Yeah. 
and then just a pinch of raw garlic. I like that. If you could juice that lemon for me. Okay, and I'm going to do some something that you taught me, that Jasper taught you. Jasper White, our, our fantastic mutual chef. He's now chef doing friend. yoga and he's I don't know. He's doing yoga and somewhere. loving life because he's retired. Yeah, he does it this way, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, oops, there we go. You're going to do it. Or he did this way. Did he? That makes more sense. Which makes a little Do we want sense. a lot of lemon? Like that. Perfect. But that's a great trick. Yeah. We'll take out two. Yeah. A few little pits. Lemon seeds. Gosh. Okay. This is, you know what's, what makes me happy about this? Is there's so many different layers of flavors and textures. So you got the crispy thing, you got the coleslaw thing, you got the creamy thing. Exactly. And then you got the buns. And again, I will repeat, this is a, this is a restaurant recipe. Yeah. I did it in honor of Sarah because I know how Sarah loves great food. Yeah. And. Oh, yeah, well, I do. I don't know if I needed it for eight, but that's okay. That's okay. So mm. now we're going to put a little bit in here. Mm-hmm. Just right. a little. Mm -hmm. Just a little. Well, yeah, this, this is kind of like your creamy coleslaw, just like a good barbecue sandwich. You want something to cool off. Off the heat. Because this, this sauce is spicy. This is okay. How's that? Oh, yeah. Is that good? Oh, yeah. Mmm. 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 Wow. A little bit more. Yummy. Okay. Let's so good. See. Let's get one more spoon. Mm -hmm. Let's see how our sauce is coming together. Oh, yeah. Mm. This is looking good. Okay. We can. We can do this. Get this thing going. Do you want me to bring everything down? No, no, no. Stay there. I'm coming okay. to you. Okay. Oh, you're coming All to right. me. We have a couple beautiful buns here. There we go. Here we go. We take our chicken. So do you serve this for lunch, for dinner, or this both? This is on our menu at lunch, which I just love. Here's our sauce. We take our chicken. Wow, this is totally decadent. Into this butter hot momiji sauce, like that. Dripping. Oh, yeah. All right, and dunk that. Butter momiji. Oh, yeah, baby. Look at that. Oh, that's what I'm talking about, Sarah. I can't believe it. That, that beautiful, creamy, rich slaw on top. That's what we're talking about. Like that. This is sort of Dagwood-esque, I'd say. We're going to, because we have to, because it's a little bit hard to eat. Well, wait a minute. What, when does that go on? No, that's the that's Oh, the that's slaw. the dressing. We already did it. What am I saying? Okay. I have the attention span of a two-year-old. Okay, oh my God, that is gorgeous. Right, like that and that. It's steaming. Let's do it again. You could make mini versions of this too, right? Oh, you could do sliders. sliders. You yeah. can make little sliders of this. But we don't want a mini version, Sarah, because we are big people. Oh, uh, yeah. Let's go eat chicken. Let's go Come eat on. chicken, oh, buffalo top chicken. Top Cheers. Cheers. Always nice to have oh, you, Sarah. Yes. Little Pinot Gris from Carneros. Yeah, I love this. Right? Cocktails Stainless and, steel. Yes. Right? That's like a quince nuance. A little, not sweet, but a little bit of sweetness. And we have some spicy food going on. Yeah, so no, that's going to be perfect. That. that sweetness is going to cut. Oh, I'm so excited. I love how creamy. I mean, we, it's really like risotto. There was, all right? Yes, it is. Mm, mm, wow. Mm. My husband says never eat anything bigger than your head. I think I'm in trouble with this. Oh, my God. God, that's good. This is hands down the best chicken sandwich I've ever eaten. Oh, thank you. Mm. This is mm. unbelievable. I love, obviously, you can make your dish 20 times before you've got my dish uh -huh. done. But the creaminess of the risotto, the pasta water, but the blue cheese is your butter. Mm. It melted everywhere. Right. You know what? What? I think we did buffalo brown. I, I, think, think, we did. I think we did our version of buffalo chicken. We did, we did, we did, we did. So mm. I love mm. you. Mm. You're the best. I love I'm, you too. And your latest book is what? Home Cooking 101. Home Cooking 101. There's no one better to learn from than Sarah Moulton. Thank I love you. you. Thank, Thank you very you. much. And I love you guys as always. Peace and good eating. Cheers.